Today's program has been brought to you by TechServe, New York's original and still the best Apple computer, iPod, and iPhone store and repair shop. For more information, visit TechServe.com. Broadcasting live from Bushwick, Brooklyn, you're listening to HeritageRadioNetwork.org. We talk about food, we talk about music, with musical dudes, finger on the pulse, snacky tunes. Welcome to Snacky Tunes. I am one half your host, Greg Bresnitz. Uh, Darren Bresnitz has now officially begun his five-month slacker sabbatical of having a day job that he can't quite seem to get out of to do our weekly radio show at 2 p.m. on a Monday. Um, that was just Feelings Gone um, by Beacon, who will actually be live on Snacky Tunes in a couple weeks. I'm really excited about that. That EP is called For Now. Um, it's really, really great. And, of course, the opening theme song by Wallpaper... I feel I don't shout out enough that he does it. Um, in keeping with the slacker brother theme, uh, we have got one half the brother's green. Josh, welcome to Snacky Tunes. Hello, hello. Uh, actually, though, your brother is not slackering. He's. Can you talk about it? Yeah, he's he's working right now. We're in the midst of finalizing the, the negotiations for season two, so he's taking care of that while I'm here. Awesome. So. It's just a couple of brothers. A couple of brothers. From Philadelphia. Yes. Did you know that we're from Philadelphia? Yes. You guys went to Lower Marion, is yeah. that right? Where'd you yeah. go? Radnor. Okay. Yeah, so All right. we're rivals, actually. Co- I, 107 years or something. Um, yes. <laughs> so get get out. <laughs> get out. Get out. Um, 
Let's uh, let's give a little history. Who who is the brother Green? The brother Green. Well, I've been a a brother to my brother. I'm 27. He's 24. So ever since the day he was born, we've been brothers. And I moved to New York about five years ago, actually, with my band to do that whole thing. You know, the the New York dream. And through the process of being in a band and not making very much money, I started cooking for a lot of people. And I used to have a day job, and I was laid off, so I, I needed to just find ways to save. And I always loved food. Like, I grew up watching Emerald. Like, I'd watch him at, like, one in the morning in Can I hear your school. Bam impression? Bam! Pretty good. <laughs> and... So I, I grew up, you know, watching him and, and just loving food, and I was always dating vegetarians for some reason, so that, that kind of forced me to cook even more and try to impress them, and they hated it. I sucked at the time. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, I guess all their, you know, the, the not appreciation for it kind of drove me. But my mom also wasn't a very good cook, and, and through the years, my brother and I would cook a lot. So when I moved up here and I needed to make money, I actually just started cooking for people. And people would say, you know, I love your food. Will you throw a dinner party for me or will you deliver lunches? And just over time, um, it just kind of grew and grew. And more people were asking me to do these personalized things. Because as people develop different types of diets or, you know, say they wanted to throw a party, but they couldn't find a caterer that was willing to work within their means, you know, whatever their budget was, whatever type of food, we just loved to cook. So I would do it, you know, and it kind of took off. And my brother moved in and he helped because he was really into food. And through that process, my roommate, who's a filmmaker, came by and he just started filming us all the time. And we would just kind of cut her up in interesting ways and we'd play music and we'd cook. Um, and then when the new Hungry Channel came on, which is, you know, through Electus and YouTube, they really liked us and they had seen some videos and we did a season and now we're working on season two. So let's talk about the rise of the YouTube channels because, you know, they've gone yes. out to Pitchfork, they've gone out to Vice, but very interesting. They got Bruce Seidel mm-hmm. uh, from Food Network to come over. So, you know, being essentially one of the guinea pigs, um, how would you say that it's fitting into the overall food programming, like food content world? I think it's it's actually really cool because when we were going through the process of filming, you know, we were shopped around to some more major networks. And I think because I'm a musician at heart and I love playing music, I didn't want to get involved in these like major crazy contracts where they're like take over your life and it's just, you know, they're they're kind of making you a puppet. They uh, will essentially own the title The Brothers Green. Yes, exactly. They'll own everything, you know. They'll own the pants I wear and you know what's under it and everything. Uh, <laughs> so I don't, I don't think it goes that deep. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm not willing to find out. But uh and uh, there's a lot of great things about that, but Hungry came along and it was just a really cool opportunity because they were trying to find people that were real, that were doing things that were interesting and that they were really passionate about. Um, and they also, because they love what we had already done, um, they were really willing to work with us and work with our ideas. So we were developing the episodes and we were developing what we wanted to cook. Um, so I think having YouTube, it gives people this more directness to what you're actually cooking. Um, and I think as more people become aware of food, and aware of like the realness to it, you know, and the connection that people can have, it goes away from like the cookie cutter stuff that's on TV, and it gets more like in your face and alive. So, how are you and your brother getting in people's face through your show? Well, it's just, I mean, there's every episode we try to have a band come on just to kind of help promote that like local scene because we have a lot of friends that are musicians and we're always playing. But it's, I think it's really just about inspiring people to get in the kitchen that are maybe afraid to. You know, a lot of times we'll, people will come over to our house and we'll be cooking and they'll see us making like homemade pizza and just rolling dough. And they're always like, oh, I can't do that. That's amazing. And it's like, it's really not. It's just a few ingredients and just take a little bit of time. So we're trying to teach people that if you make things sort of from the homemade basis where you know what's going into your food and not even getting too deep into like what the like specific where the ingredients are coming from so much as just like basic connection that you have to go into the market and buying flour and buying, you know, tomatoes and different things like that. If Even just that process alone, if you're doing that and you're trying to cook, it's going to improve your overall lifestyle. It's because you're going to feel better. And Now, do the bands play or do they just help out and cook? The bands really just play and they eat too <laughs> and they'll bring friends over. I mean, it, it really changes. There's no specific format. Um, truthfully, when we first started, we weren't sure how the format was going to go. 
And I think what we've learned through YouTube is when people go on YouTube, they're typing in like how to make pizza or how to make pasta or how mm-hmm. to make cookies. So they want that directness, and I think YouTube gives you that directness, you know, as opposed to like you're you're watching Food Network and you're just hoping something you want to cook is on or something comes on that inspires you. <laughs> right. This you actually type in, it says, okay, this is how I make it, and and that's what YouTube's trying to do. They're trying to make good content because they know people are starting to go there to learn things. So they're trying to find people that are entertaining and people that know what they're talking about. Um, which has been has been really nice for us because we just like to cook and hang out, and we're not trained chefs by any means, and so we're trying to inspire like the home cook to just pick up a knife and start cutting and see where you lead. So, do you guys post the recipes online as well? Yeah, the recipes. I think there will eventually be a website where everything's kept, but for now it's just under the video. So it's kind of cool because you can go to a video like you know how to make uh, pasta and click on the info, and the recipe is just right there. So you can watch the video and also just you know follow the instructions if you'd like. That's awesome. All right, well, we're going to talk about what do you guys have planned for next season. And uh, Philadelphia cheesesteak. Philadelphia cheesesteak. No, where? The, the Philly, Philly, Philly? No, I'm saying where do you go get cheesesteaks in Philly? Oh, where do I go? You know, I've always had a love for gyms, I think, because of my dad. I mean, I can't say it's my favorite, but it was always, like, sort of... That was always his spot, because he, he was, lived around there. Okay. And also, I had a friend that had the cheesesteak record there, so there was, like, a... What's the cheesesteak record? Uh, it was, until about two years ago, 12 cheesesteaks in an hour and a half. And he broke it when he was 15 years old. Are you kidding? No. Did you watch him? I did not, but it was a crazy story. He went into gyms one day and just casually was eating. And he wasn't even that... I mean, he's, like five foot seven, like you know, 180 pounds. He wasn't that big of a guy. Uh, he was a freshman in high school, and he saw the cheesesteak record was 11. So he's like, oh, I could do that. Just was like out of nowhere, you know. So like, all right. So they set him up, and if he doesn't eat the cheesesteaks completely, he has to pay for them all. So which is a big deal when you're a freshman. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot. Of money. It's, a lot of, it's like a hundred bucks. Uh, so he goes in. He eats ten and three quarters. He doesn't do it. He fails. So he has to pay for all the cheesesteaks. He comes back five days later, and he eats 12. And breaks the record. What did he do in those five days? I have no idea. But, I mean, eating that much cheesesteak could kill you. It's like, that's like I mean, 12 feet of cheesesteak. I mean, I have always of the... Uh, we um, had a no pair growing up, and uh, she was from Ireland. And she came and she ate one. And my mom always tells a story that she's like... She just kept talking throughout the night how she could feel like it was growing inside of her. Like the bread was expanding and the cheese was clawing and everything. And she like just felt so awful from eating one... She's yeah, like, and I, 12 is like, well, kudos to your friend. I don't even know where you'd fit that in yeah. your body. Like, you have to start going into your legs and your feet. It's yeah, like, I don't, I mean, that is crazy. All right, well, we're going to play a track um, from one of our favorite favorite bands called Midnight Magic. Um, a track called Same Way I Feel, which I actually played live on Snacky Tunes a number of years ago, which you can find if you just uh, go to iTunes and look for our Snacky Tunes podcast. Uh, and then we'll be back with Josh Green uh, and his love affair. And uh, yeah. Anything? Uh, no. I'm okay. excited to hear the song. Yeah. Oh 
Joe. Your computer is so slow, I can't even use this thing. Yeah, I should probably get a new one. Do you have any suggestions? Oh, totally, man. You should go to TechServe. Okay, what's so good about TechServe? Well, they've got this awesome new insider program that's free when you get a new Mac with Apple Care. So you should buy your computer there because you get 50% off data transfer, free loaner computers, front-of-the-line repair privileges, an annual Mac tune-up service, backup consultation and setup, seminars, and much more. Okay, yeah, where's TechServe? It's at uh, 119 West 23rd Street in New York City. They're New York's premier authorized Apple reseller and service provider. And you should totally check out TechServe.com for more information. All right, that settles it. I'm headed to TechServe. All right, welcome back. It kind of ends. But uh, same way I feel. A little disco, a little slow disco. Yeah, it's really cool. For us to talk over. It feels good. It was kind of like the, like the lights went down. It was kind of like leaned <laughs> right in. Just. You guys should have like lighting for that kind of stuff, just just for the breaks. Uh, yeah. Flip a switch. I, and just, I mean, I don't think that on... We have a new on-air sign, but I actually don't think it goes off. Joe, does it go off? No, it never goes off. So technically, <laughs> we're, all, we're always on. Always, always on air, 24-7. Yeah, wow. so it's kind of... Yeah, not that there's always shows on a 24 7, but we're working towards it. You have to be on all the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it used to, when, when Darren's here, it's very easy just to kind of like take turns, but now it's very much. Is this your first solo? No, I mean, we've done solo, but this will be the first in like five months. So, oh, wow. my. Um, You're doing a good job. Well, thank you. <laughs> you. You. <laughs> so charming. So, season two is picked up, season or being two. picked up yeah. in, the, in the way. And, and what's the theme for the, the next season? Well, the first season didn't have a specific theme. Like, we'd just be like, hey, today we're making, you know, we're going to, like, grill on the roof for some yeah. friends. We're making chicken and waffles. So this one, we're just, like, kind of, you know, the cool thing about YouTube is you get to actually see the comments and see what people say, like, instantly. You know, so you know if people like the episode or the show. Um, but so, are, are you filming in a way where you can adjust or it's, like, you're not, just going straight through and not really i mean every season you know yeah. it's funny like you'll see something it's like oh i didn't like that and you're like oh well, they're really not gonna like the next episode <laughs> they're really not gonna, yeah <laughs> you didn't like that uh but but we're so this season we're gonna do a little bit more of a late night theme i think because we have a lot of music and a lot of the food we like to cook is sort of based around like entertaining but not in like a really you know specific way it's just like have some friends over and you know make pizzas or you know teach them how to roll sushi so we're doing things like that. It's like a midnight munchies type thing. Okay. Then you were telling me about the Philly, Philly, Philly cheesesteak. Yeah. So I came up with this concept to do, yeah, I call it a Philly, Philly, Philly cheesesteak. And, and being from Philly, that's a big staple. Um, so the, the idea is to make a Philadelphia style soft pretzel bun um, and then make a Philly cheesesteak, you know, chop up the steak. And then for the sauce, instead of just the whiz, it's a Philadelphia cream cheese sauce. So that's you get the Philly, Philly, Philly. Are you a Wiz guy? I like the Wiz. I, I, a lot of times I get the pizza steak, though. Okay. Because instead of the ketchup, I like having the tomato sauce and the mozzarella. But I'm just a straight provolone, provolone. sautéed onions, maybe some mushrooms. Yeah. Or broccoli rabe if you go to Tony Luke. Well, what's your spot? Tony Luke's is kind of my... Uh, that's a good one. We went to... Well, there's um, Mama's which is in, like, Belmont, mm-hmm. uh, which is the one of the infamous ever-growing. It's like a little, you know, like those little dinosaur capsules that you drop yeah, in the water? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's that place. Um, uh, Bala Pizza, which we just grew up, which which was kind of awesome. Like, they sold it, and it didn't taste as good, and then the guy bought it back and brought back the original recipe, uh, which never happens, never. ever. It, you night, it's like, oh, yeah, that's how it used to taste. Yeah. And then um, Tony Luke's, because it's, uh, when we go to Flyers games, it's on the way. Yeah, and then you kind of just watch like big dudes shoveling, like <laughs> I mean it's impressive in like a very short amount of time. And it's at the stadium now too, which is cool. Yeah, but I always kind of feel that food at the stadium is never as good as like the. Well, I'm sure. I mean, I haven't had it. I yeah. don't know, but and you're probably right. I do remember going to Tony Luke's, and they actually had, and I got it. Now that I, I totally forgot about this, but years ago they have a cheesesteak that they have cream cheese as the cheese not as a sauce but just like straight cream cheese on the and i tried it and it, it was it was interesting it was i mean good. how are you going to do your cream i mean without giving away too much of the episode how I, are you gonna do the- I mean i make a basic bechamel and then i put in cream cheese and i actually do use Velveeta because that's one of the few like kind of weird like you're not really sure if it's food or if it's like alien something that i'll actually use because it's just something like special about that stuff i mean all my texas friends use it in queso yeah. so it's kind of like you just try not to think. I try not to think of it in solid form. Yeah. I try to only think of it as like in melted form, it's a, it's a which good. is totally fine. But if you just avoid the congealed, 
yeah. status of Velveeta, you'd be totally and that, fine. And that's one thing we grew up, I remember we used to have those big blocks of Velveeta. My dad would get like the big ones, and we'd have that cheese cutter with like the wire on it. I remember cutting it and making, uh, like putting it in omelets. I mean, how like how little resistance did you have to use to cut it? Would you just like lay it on top yeah, it and just kind of <laughs> fell through because of gravity? It was very, very soft. Do your parents cook? Well, Mike and I actually started cooking because my mom, I mean, she would cook, but she didn't enjoy it and she wasn't very good. So we, she was always giving us the same food. You know, and I remember growing up, I hated spaghetti and meatballs. And I would tell my friends and they'd be Italian. They'd be like, are you kidding me? It's the greatest thing ever. But I didn't realize I was eating, you know, boxed pasta, right. canned sauce and like right. frozen meatballs. So the first time I went and had like real spaghetti and meatballs, I was blown away. Do you remember where it was? The first time I had fresh pasta sauce and fresh noodles. And this was, this was later on, but I remember this experience blew me away. It was for my girlfriend's, like her sister's bat mitzvah was at Lebec Finn. And I had never been there before and I always wanted to go. And the, it was, you know, one of the top restaurants in Philly at the time. And all the adults were getting this, like, incredible food. It was, like, filet and all these different things. And I was, like... Because they were, like, all the kids get a choice of, you know, red, green, or white sauce, you know. And I was, like, what? I was, like, just disappointed because I wanted to have this great meal. And so I got the tomato sauce and fresh pasta, and I ate it. And it was one of the best things I ever tasted. I remember, like, tear drop from my eye. <laughs> it's, like, wow, this is, like, fresh, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's... And I'm sure you, now you guys just make pasta at home all oh, the yeah, time all the time that's going to be one of the episodes is going to involve i won't get too far into it but uh at least we'll see how it goes with the leftover ravioli thanksgiving ravioli so oh yeah. okay <laughs> oh i like that that's yeah. that's it's pretty good yeah i mean i think that one of the joys of the upcoming winter is throwing on like a pot of fresh tomato sauce and just mm. sometimes just like having a book next to it and just kind of staring at it and looking so at good. it it's, it's the best so good. The um, Franks from Frank like have the best, easiest pasta sauce recipe ever. I don't know Franks. Uh, Frank is patinos. Oh, and it's just like five ingredients. Simple. That's four, five ingredients in four hours. Wow, that's yeah. all you need. That's it. That's all you need. So, um, the one thing I always like to discuss when family's on is working with family, hmm. and you know sometimes you have the most epic blowouts, <laughs> and then two minutes later, like, do you want to get a sandwich? Yeah. So how do you and your brother, you know, balance, you know, personal versus professional? Well, Mike and I are very different. I mean, we, growing up together, we've shared a lot of influences, but we're very different people. And he's a lot more, like, he went to school for architecture, um, more on the musician side. So I've always been more kind of just out there, like, in moment, whatever. I feel like cooking, I'll look around and grab it. Mm -hmm. He's a little more structured, and his food tends to look prettier and better than mine. Like, I can have... Sometimes I can make a dish and it could look great, and other times it looks like just slop, you know, and I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, so when, we're, when it comes to figuring out what we want to do, there's, we definitely do go back and forth, and we bicker because we've been, you know, mortal enemies since the day one, you know, fighting and stuff. I'm aware of the... <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm sure aware. You know. um, but overall, we, we've grown to find a good balance um, and I think we trust each other at the end of the day. You know, things will get stressful. A lot of times we'll cook for people, and one of us usually takes the lead because maybe I got the job, so I'll take the lead. Like, we just did a wedding for 160 people last week, um, and that was, like, my job I have been working on, so I'll take the lead a little bit more. Um, we found that actually works a lot better as opposed to, like, the way it used to go is we would just have a menu and we would just go for it, but now it's like, all right, let's each take a few things we want to make and that way you're not, like, micromanaging me and I'm not screwing with you. Yeah, I mean, I, I can only speak for my brother and I. It's like, it was kind of, we're so used to doing everything, but once we've learned to divvy up the tasks, it yeah. actually, I mean, it's about trust. Trust, and what you're good at. It's like, yeah. well, you know, and, and I think it, like I tend to have that thing of, like, wanting to control everything, especially because I started before him and I was doing this and then he moved in. So I was trying to, like, be involved in every little thing. But you do have to trust them to say, okay, they know what they're doing. If they have any questions, hopefully they'll come to me with questions. But let Mike do what he's good at, and I'll do what I'm good at, and then you'll come out with the best thing possible. I agree. Yeah. All right, well, well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, Can you get people the nuts and bolts of where to watch season one and find you guys and hire you guys? Yeah. Yeah, just search for Brothers Green on YouTube, or you can go to youtube.com slash hungry, but if you just type in Brothers Green, all our episodes come out. Awesome. And then do you have any sh you have shows confirmed for CMJ? Yeah, we're playing at Rockwood Music Hall um, on the 17th, 
We're playing a show at Mercury Lounge on the 4th, and then at Music Hall Stage 2, I think it's, it's whatever Thursday is. Amazing. Yeah. And is all that information, where is that living? It should be, the band's called Canon Logic, so if you go to our... Oh, you guys are Canon Logic? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> no, well, I'm... <laughs> See your flyers all over the neighborhood. Yeah, so yeah, of course, I guess you've seen yeah. seen the flyers. We've been here for a long time. Yeah. So okay. Stick around. Well, next time we'll have you guys come play live. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, and Bummer on the band today, whose van broke down. Of course, yeah. Of it's course. A shame. Yeah. The 2 a.m., like, frantic phone call, like, uh, uh, it's like, <laughs> hey, we got more shows. Um, well, thanks for tuning to Snacky Tunes. Uh, next week, we'll be back with more episodes about food and music. Uh, we're going to take you out today with a band, Lucius. Uh, the track is called Turn Around, Turn It Around, and all these tracks can actually be found online later this week um, for our column with Bullet Magazine of the same name, Snacky Tune. So if you're listening to a podcast of this, it'll be up. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. Lucius is great. one of my favorite local bands, actually. Oh, so well, it there it well, is. Yeah. 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 Well, I planned it. <laughs> I figured. Here we go. Uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.